Don't use the timeout for animations. Avoid animating the left and top positions directly. To achieve better performance, it's essential to utilize Rayways Animate Frame along with CSS Transform Translate. Hello everyone! In this tutorial, we are going to animate a small red ball smoothly across the screen using Rayways Animate Frame and Transform Translate. This method provides better performance compared to older techniques like animating with left and top using set timeout. Let's get started. We begin by adding two elements to our HTML, a container and a ball, each with specific IDs for easy JavaScript access. The ball will be styled as a circle with 100% S radius. It will be red and with a border. So let's add background color red, border radius 50%, position absolute and border 3 pixels solid black. Our ball will be inside the container. The container will be 500 pixel box with a border, positioned relatively. Everything what we need to do here is straight width and height with 500 pixel, border, position relative and margin. The ball positioned absolutely within the container, so it will be free to move around based on our inputs. The next step will add buttons for direction control left, right, up and down. Each button will have an ID to correspond with its direction. So let's copy our left button and add three more buttons. And also we need to rename everything to the correspond direction. Right, right, top and bottom. Nice. Now we have all HTML and CSS for our solution. The next step is to add JavaScript. So let's open our JavaScript file and start writing. First, let's retrieve the ball and container HTML elements from the document by their IDs. So let's write get element by ID ball and let's check if it works by using console log. And as you can see, we have our element in the console, so it works. Let's do the same, but for the container. So we will have const container get element by id with container. The next step is to add empty function to move the ball in a specific direction. This function will use in our add event listener event. So this function will receive direction as a left, right, top or bottom. Then let's add our event listeners to buttons to control the direction of the ball's movement. Let's add event for our left button. Let's maybe a bit modify it just to feed the screen. And let's do the same but for other directions. Yeah, tops don't like me as you can see. Sorry. Uh, let's modify it a bit. And let's do it two times more. Let's delete extra spaces. And let's rename it to the right, right, top, top, and for the bottom. And here are all our events. Let's add on solo just to check if it works. Yes, it receives correct direction. And now let's add some extra logic. So if I click on any of the buttons, it moves the element until it reaches the container or I click one more time on the same button. So if you receive two times the same direction, we need to stop our movement. So let's add variable for the iron direction. And now let's implement our stop movement function. Stop movement function is just reset function. It should answer animate frame by animation ID. So we need to add animate ID. By default, it will be null. We also need to reset iron direction as an empty string. And now let's add new variable for animation ID. Let's add it as a null. And now let's describe our else statement. So we need to set our direction to run direction. If animation ID is false, it means that we need to run our 
animation. Let's add animation ID where result of this variable will be function res animate frame where we pass our move ball function. But before we start moving our elements, we need to get the dimensions and position of both the ball and the antenna. I will use get bounding line trash to receive dimensions of the antenna. And the same function I will use for dimension of the ball. So let's write it. So it will be the same, but for the ball, let's just add ball.getBounding line trash. And here we will have our switch statement. Our switch statement will have four aces for left, top, right, and bottom. So let's just add all our aces and then I will describe all of them. So let's add ace top with bray and ace bottom with bray as well. And at the end we need to all update position to apply the new position of the ball. So let's run our update position which we need to describe to update the ball's position on the screen using CSS transform. So let's disrupt our update position function. The main goal of this function is to create a CSS transform string that moves the element by two variables, delta x and delta y, which we'll be using in our translate function. So let's add these two variables, which are undefined for now. And in the end, we need to apply the styles by ball.style.transform. So let's add just our final line here and I forgot to add function before our update position. So let's fix it and now let's add our two variables delta e and delta y. By default they will be 50 in just example. And let's run our update position just to check if it works and it works. And the next step is describe all our directions. We will start from the left. If delta x is more than zero, this is we in increment, sorry, decrement our delta x. Let's maybe check if it works. And we receive event, but nothing happens. I guess we need to, to save our animation ID. So we need to write animation ID is equal request animate frame move ball. So let's write it to continue the animation by requesting another animation frame. By the way, how do you think? Do we need to answer animation frame with previous animation ID? I left your answer under the video. Meanwhile, we receive the event, but nothing happens again. I guess that I missed something. And yeah. I see. After delta x, I see it equal. Let's fix it and check it. Yeah, right now, at least left works. And the next step is to increase delta x to move the ball right, ensuring it stays within the container. By checking if delta x plus ball red width is less than container width. And just write delta x plus 1. And now right event should work as well, but it doesn't. Hmm. Let's roll to the right. Maybe the error is there. Yeah, we need to change container to container range. And now we have left and right events. Nice. And let's maybe describe our top direction. So we need to decrease delta y to move the ball to the top within the container bounds. So we just need to check if delta y is more than zero, we need to decrease delta y. It will be the same as we have for the left. Let's finish and check our top. And it works as well. Now let's add the last direction for the bottom. So everything what we need just to increase delta y to move the ball down, staying within the container. Let's check if delta y plus ball red high is less than container red high. Then we can increase delta y. Let's finish it and check all our directions. 
and as you can see everything was perfect it's maybe chair all or not aces for bottom and maybe for right <laughs> but yeah we have some small issue with bottom and right directions yeah maybe it's not enough just to have minus one let's maybe change our default position for faster testing and maybe let's change one to five and let's check it one more time and i guess we don't need to use minus we need to use plus and let's do the same but for the right direction and test it one more time and yeah now it looks much better right bottom nice left nice and maybe let's check all of them and it works perfect that's all for today's video don't forget to hit like and subscribe see you next time bye